Hello and welcome to another Confessions of a Yarn Addict episode. Today's a little bit different. I thought I would take you at a look of my bookcase. I got a new bookcase recently over in the corner there. That one with my printer on it. Um, and when I put it in, I went through all my books and I got rid of a few of them. I had a big D stash recently. Maybe you even bought a book from me. If you did, thank you very much. And um, I thought it'd be interesting to go through some of the books I have and show you what's on my bookshelf and why I've got some of those books. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's too many, but I will show you a look at all the books. We'll just go through what's on the shelves and then I'll look at a few more books in detail, some of the, my favourite ones and why they are my favourite ones. So I do hope you enjoyed this episode. So let's have a look at, look at my bookshelves and I'll show you some of the books I have on my shelves. First, we'll start up here. I've got a couple of big sewing books and then there's a load of books there which I've contributed to. So they are books that I've contributed one or two patterns to. And then let's look at my main bookshelf. So I've de-stashed a whole load of books recently. I've gotten rid of loads of them. So I'm going to just take you through a quick look at what I've got and then we'll have a closer look at some of them. So my most recent book is Tuck Stitches by Nancy Marchant. We'll have a look at that later. Victorian Lace Today, one of my favourite lace books, which we'll look at later. Um, creating Original Hand Knitted Lace, we'll take a closer look at. That book is beautiful, look, Successful Lace Knitting by Donna uh, Drakunas. She's also, Donna's also written this Arctic Lace book based on lace from Alaska. Then we have um, Knitted Lace of Estonia, beautiful book by Nancy Bush, absolutely beautiful um, knitting lace. This is a kind of uh, workshop on how to knit lace. It's quite an old book, so it's not necessarily that user friendly, but it's got loads of stitch patterns in it. And I've used that a lot over the years. Then we have another book on knitted lace, um, which is a pattern collection from Interweave Knits. Uh, so it's patterns of different designers. And then I have these two books, which are really, it's the first book of modern lace knitting and the second book of modern lace knitting. They're very old and they feature very intricate um, lace designs. And they are not very user friendly at all. They're quite difficult to understand, some quite difficult techniques, but they are beautiful books. Um, then we got some an heirloom lace knitting, which is based on Shetland lace knitting by Sharon Miller. We have um, the Magic of Shetland lace knitting by Elizabeth Lovick, who I've met and who's lovely. We got um, a, the, a Legacy of Shetland lace, um, which is a beautiful book. That's a newer one. And then we got another Shetland lace knitting book here. Then we have one called Wrapped in Lace, um, which is by uh, Margaret Stove. As you can see, I've got a lot of lace knitting books, Barbara Abbey's Knitting Lace, and then um, Brooke Nico, Lovely Knitted Lace. And then this book is written by Donna Dracunas again. It's a Lithuanian knitting traditions, which is quite a thick book, quite comprehensive on knitting traditions from Lithuania. We've got two Norwegian books uh, on mittens. So this one I'll take a closer look at in a minute. And we've got a slightly older book on Norwegian patterns. Uh, that one is in English. That one is in Norwegian. And then we have another little book from, um, I think it's Dutch. Oh no, Estonian. Estonian mittens. Um, fashion design drawing course. I need to look at that again because I'm trying to get my head around. I'm not very good at sketching and I need to learn that. Very old stitch dictionary that's falling apart. And then we got a couple of Japanese stitch dictionaries. I'll take you a closer look at that one later. And then every designer has stitch dictionaries. So I got the um, first, second, third and fourth uh, treasury of um, Knitting Patterns by Barbara Walker. They're very comprehensive um, stitch pattern dictionaries. Then I've also got 400 knitting stitches here. Another Japanese knitting dictionary. A um, 
Orenburg Shawl, Stitch Dictionary, a couple of Mary Thomas books, a couple of Pom Pom magazines, a uh, book on different cast ons and cast offs, and then three little sort of handbooks on knitting. And then I've also got a double knitting delights dvd by lucy neepy which i haven't looked at for years and look at this shelf here so we've got a book of uh, the knitters book of yarn written by um clara parks it's a very comprehensive book about yarn quite useful when you first start designing i think because to be able to design you really need to understand lace uh got a little book here on spinning We've got a Norwegian Selbustrik pattern book. So this has different patterns from based on Selbu mittens in Norway. It's got mittens, socks, um, hats, scarves, um, knee-high socks, different things like that. And then we got um, Julekule from Arnon Carlos. Um, that's the uh, Christmas balls. My mum bought me this in Norwegian the very first Christmas after it came out. It has since been translated into English as well. And then we've got a crochet motifs book. A lot of my crochet books are de-stashed recently. And also a finishing techniques on cro crochet finishing techniques by Pauline Turner. I kept a few crochet books. Uh, chain free crochet made easy. So this is a book that teaches you how to start um, your crochet with a foundation row rather than a crochet chain. And then we got a little thing on filet crochet and a crochet bible. So I got rid of a lot of crochet books. This is a book that I don't know whether to keep or not. It's a Nikki Epstein knitting over the edge. I think she's also got one called knitting on the edge. Um, I nearly got rid of it in my d recently, but it has some really interesting techniques in it, so I've decided to keep it for now. Then we've got a few design books. So we've got sweater design, knitting from the top down from by Barbara Walker, designing knitwear by Deborah Newton. This book is very popular for knitting designers, sweater design in plain English that's very useful um, the Nippa design workshop by Shirley Payton which I'll talk about later progressive knitter I think that's on design and kind of more um, artistic type knitting I think I haven't looked at that for a long time uh, Shannon Oki the knit girl a guide to professional Nippa design Shannon um, has um, she currently has a um, publisher. She she owns a publishing company in the US, and she was she's been uh, editor of different magazines. She's written and edited loads of books. She was the editor editor of a British magazine called Yarn Forward um, many many years ago for a short time, um, and she's written this book to help people get started in knitwear design. It's a few years old now, so I don't know how useful it is. I can't remember exactly what's in it actually. Then I got two Elizabeth Zimmerman books. This one I'll show you later. And that one, Knitting Without Tears. I really recommend the Elizabeth Zimmerman books. She's got quite a few. They're really good. Then this book on feral yokes or yoke sweaters by Kate Davis. I mainly bought that uh, to learn a few new techniques. Then we got Cornish Gernses and Knit Frogs, which we'll look at later. Brioche Knitting knitting on off the axis and the principles of knitting which we look at later and then there's two vogue knitting books so this book here no this book here was the first um this was the first knitting reference book that i bought when i got back into knitting quite a few years ago and then this is like an updated version 25 year kind of anniversary version which i um a few years ago i don't know when it was a few years ago now but it's a little bit battered so i obviously had it for a while so these are some of the books and pattern collections that i've contributed to over the years so we have the first uh few designs i did for west yorkshire spinners i did four sweaters was it eight sweaters i can't remember basically all the sweaters in this booklet 
and that poncho are mine and then there were some other designs by another by other designers they're mine these were from by somebody else julie ferguson that was mine the sweaters were mine the accessories were somebody else but yeah it's um really nice book it's a few years old now but i think you can still get the patterns uh from west yorkshire spinners is their country birds yarns in dk and iron weight and i did i think i did one garment in each of the four colors in each of the iron and dk weight that was available at the time it's a few years ago since i did this this is my latest um addition to my bookshelves it's tuck stitches by nancy marchant um it's a mainly a stitch dictionary so it has loads and loads of tuck stitches in it tuck stitches is something i experimented quite a lot with on my knitting machine and i have been trying to recreate it in hand knitting and i've had a little bit of success but um nancy has quite a comprehensive stitch dictionary in here and she also does it in two colors i'd only try to do it in single color uh, this is primarily a sort of a stitch dictionary really but it does have a few patterns at the back of the book some scarves um and if you've a cow done very simple patterns nothing too complicated i don't think um but it is you can create some really nice effects as you can see some of them are similar to brioche knitting um i would say tuck stitch is a kind of cousin of brioche uh, knitting uh, brioche stitches and um, this is a really interesting book um, as I've been interested in experimenting with tuck stitches for a while I saw this book when it first came out for some reason I didn't order it um, and I just ordered it recently and I've already knitted up some of these swatches um, Nancy Marchant is uh, says in the book that she's happy for designers to use these stitch patterns in their own designs as long as they credit her um so yeah really like this book probably mainly a interest to people who are interested in trying to design their own stuff even very simple stuff like blankets and scarves and things um a lot of the stitch patterns are double-sided so they would make quite nice blankets i think they're also quite cushioned uh and slightly thicker so i think they could be really interesting for blankets and that kind of thing Creating Original Hand Knitted Lace is a book that uh, is written by Margaret Stove. I think she's from New Zealand. Um, and if my memory serves me right, I think she knitted a baby shawl for Prince William when he was born. Um, I think that was Margaret Stove. Um, apologies if I've remembered incorrectly. But this book I actually got quite a few years ago. And then recently... I saw somebody on Twitter talking about this book and I thought, oh, I don't have that book. That sounds really good. And I ordered it again. And when I opened it, I realized I already had it. So uh, I sold the book that I ordered um, in a recent uh, book de stash sale because I thought there's no point having two books. So this is a book that's more about creating hand knitted lace. I would say it's more for the slightly more advanced lace knitter or maybe somebody who wants to use lace in design um it's not a beginner book to lace uh, there's a lot of text in here a lot of charts a lot of the charts don't have photos of the stitch patterns but it talks very much about how to create lace stitches um it shows how margaret creates some uh, lace patterns based on um native uh, new zealand flowers and things so it's a really interesting book but it is a little bit more difficult to understand a little bit heavier it doesn't have any like full patterns in it so it's really more for somebody who's interested in learning more about lace knitting and perhaps using it for design um it is an older book as well so it's probably not written in the most user-friendly way um i don't mean that as an insult to margaret Stowe, but uh newer books are probably a little bit more user-friendly but i really like this book and i haven't looked at it for a while so i might take it out and look at it again soon this is the book that started my addiction to lace knitting so this was released in 2006 and uh for christmas possibly christmas 2007 i'm not sure 
but uh, when I first heard about this book I'd only knitted a couple of very simple lace patterns and I read about this book in probably in a knitting magazine and I immediately wanted it so my in-laws got it for me for Christmas one year and um, this was really the book that started my journey with lace knitting. It's written by Jane Sowby, who I've also met, and she's lovely. It's an absolutely stunning book. Even if you never knit anything from this book, it's worth having it because it is just absolutely stunning. So let me see if I can find the first shawl that I knitted from here. I've knitted that one, I think. Um, yes, I think I knitted that one. Um... I don't know, maybe not. I've knitted a couple of shawls from this book. I can't remember. I knitted one for my mum and one for myself. Um, and that was really kind of just to explore some of the lace patterns. And I learned so much from knitting those shawls that after that, it really gave me the confidence to um, strike out and start designing my own lace. As you can see, it's inspired by uh, Victorian um, lace patterns. So there's a lot in the front of the book about Victorian uh, designers and write, knitting writers. And uh, Jane has taken some of those old stitch patterns and created some beautiful designs. Mainly shawls in here. Actually, I think it might virtually all shawls. There's also some beautiful photos of um, English stately homes. Uh, so, yeah, I absolutely love this uh, book. It really inspired me. I frequently pick it up and just flick through it uh, because it is absolutely stunning. I'm just trying to look for the first shawl I knitted from here. So I knitted one shawl for myself and one shawl for my mum. Um, I don't have the shawl I knitted for myself. I have no idea where it's gone. I do have the, I think my mum has the shawl I knitted for her. I'm trying to remember which shawl I knitted. It wasn't that one. Um, but this book is, as you can see, it's just stunning. I think that maybe was the shawl I knitted for myself. I don't know. Uh, it's been so long. Yes, that was. I definitely knitted that shawl because I made some markings um, in the pattern. So definitely that was the first show I knitted from this book. But it has kind of chapters about various designers from the Victorian age. And then it takes some of that uh, person's patterns, mainly women, and turn them into modern um, designs inspired by Victorian era. So as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. I love this book. Um, whether I'll ever knit anything from it again, I don't know. But it's definitely a book that I will keep on my bookshelf and keep going back to. So Victorian Lace Today by Jane Sowby. Jane even signed this for me because I've met her a couple of times. So she did even sign it for me in October 2008. Um, it's the first time I met her. I met her a couple of times, I think. And she's a lovely lady and I love this book. I don't know whether it's still available, um, but have a look online. You might find it um, somewhere. I highly recommend this book. So I have a few mitten books as well. This is a Norwegian one and it is written in Norwegian. My mum gave me this for Christmas one year when we were in Norway. Uh, look at that pile of mittens. It's called Fairy Tale Mittens and it is, there are some beautiful Norwegian mittens in here. All stranded colour work ones. Uh, I haven't knitted any mittens from here. I'm pretty sure my mum has. My mum has this book as well. I could have feel my mum bought me this one and then and she wanted it. So I bought it for her or something crazy. Um, but I can't remember. It's a while ago. So all the patterns are charted. Um, I think my mum's knitted a pair of mittens from here for me. But I don't think I've actually knitted any patterns from here. I think my mum knitted those from, and gave them to me. Um, yeah, some beautiful patterns. As I said, this book is written in Norwegian. Um, I don't know whether it's available in English or not. The patterns are charted, so you probably could, if you know how to knit mittens, you probably could decipher the patterns, I guess, from Norwegian. I don't know. Um, 
but yeah, it's a really nice book. Norway really does do some really lovely mittens. I've got two Norwegian mitten books, but this is my favourite. This is the newest one, and that's the most beautiful one. I have lots of stitch dictionaries. I think most designers have lots of stitch, stitch dictionaries. So a stitch dictionary is a book which just has lots of stitch patterns that you can use in your designs. Um, and I have quite a few of them. I did de-stash a load of them recently because I'm not using them as much as I used to. Uh, but I did keep a few of my favourites. And I do have a couple of these Japanese ones. Now these are interesting. A lot of Japanese stitch patterns are very ornate. Um, a lot of twists and things like that. This has got a lot of cables. It's got some lace. Um, does have a sweater. It doesn't actually have the pattern for the sweater. There are some kind of sort of ornate lace patterns in here. You can see I've folded down some of the pages to look at. Um, but yeah, it's in Japanese, but all the stitches are charted. So even though the charki at the back of the book is in Japanese, if you know a lot of symbols and you are quite experienced knitter, you can actually decipher a lot of these stitch patterns. There are some that I've tried to decipher and haven't managed it. Um, but a lot of them you can actually manage to decipher by looking at the pictures of the stitch pattern and then looking at the chart. If you don't read charts, you wouldn't get very far with this uh, book. But if you know how to read charts and um, you can read the photos of the swatches, you can work out quite a lot of these stitch patterns. Sometimes it's taken a little bit of trial and error. Um, but yeah, Japanese stitch patterns have been really popular in the last few years. A lot of designers have bought them. They're a bit easier to get hold of now, I think. When I bought uh, some of mine, they were quite difficult and I had to order them from usa quite a few of them um i did have quite a few of them i de-stashed some of them in my de-stash recently i think i only got two or three th i think i got three left um a lot of the ones i had had repeats of stitch patterns that were in other books so that's why i kept three and got uh ready the rest so i have two books by mary thomas um these are quite old books um they have a lot of techniques uh, the illustrations are mostly drawn rather than photos and um, they're interesting books um, probably not the most easiest to understand or the most user-friendly books I think modern books are a little bit easier to understand and a bit more user-friendly probably because they're written in the way that we write patterns these days whereas these are not um, but uh, <clears throat> I have learned some techniques from these books uh, I've got two of them. I don't think they're they're not the same. But there's not like a massive amount of difference between them either. But yeah, sometimes it can be fun looking at old books. You might discover techniques that were forgotten um, or that aren't very popular at the moment. So I do have a couple of these. I've had these for years and years and years. This book is an absolute beast. Look at how thick it is. It's really heavy. It's called the Principle of Principles of Knitting. Is a very it says it's a comprehensive and timeless guide. It really is comprehensive. It's written by June Hemans Hyatt, and um, I think it was written quite a few years ago, and then it was completely revised and updated a few years ago. And I bought this after it'd been updated, and I actually bought the Kindle version as well because this book is just so thick. That I don't think it's that user friendly. Um, it's quite heavy. Um, so I actually bought the Kindle version as well. I haven't looked at it a lot. When I first got it, I was using it quite a lot. But because there's just so much in here, it just seems a little bit kind of um, overwhelming. And because there's so much online now, I do use online resources quite a lot more just because it's easier and more user friendly. But if you like to have a really comprehensive knitting, technique book i this one probably tells you just about everything you need to know there's all kinds of stuff in here um so if you want a really comprehensive technique book i don't think you can go wrong with this book i'm assuming it's still in print because it's not that many years ago since it was revised and reprinted Let's see if i can find a date here so um it was first printed in 1988 and then reprinted in 2012. 
so I guess I probably got this version in uh, 2012 or 2013 it is a massive book uh, but it's highly recommended I do really like it this book is really interesting it's Cornish Guernseys and Knit Frogs uh, by Mary Wright she was based uh, locally in a um, village called Polparo which is not that far from where I live I got this from my friend Tina a few years ago. Uh, Tina specializes in um, Cornish Gansies, and I think her company is called the Cornish Gansy Company. And it's basically um, a pattern, it's a book about Cornish Gansies. Um, it's got a lot of history, a basic Gansy pattern. I haven't looked at this a lot, to be quite honest. Some of the stitch patterns used in Gansies. I haven't looked at this. There's a lot, um, mainly because Gansies and Gansies and stuff aren't something that I'm really that interested in. Um, but because it was local, it was she's based in Poparo, or she was based in Poparo. I don't know whether she's still alive or not, I'm afraid. Um, I quite like this book. A lot of history in it. And then some of the Gansies based um, from the Cornish... Uh, coast part of Cornwall where I live I think that yeah that photo is taken in Polparo which is one of the seaside villages about half an hour from where I live um, and a place that we've visited a lot over the years so I mainly bought this just out of interest it's a small booklet um, but it's very nice another Nancy Marchant book this is uh, Knitting Brioche I got this several years ago with the intention of teaching myself to knit brioche. It was before brioche became really popular and everyone were doing it. And I wanted to learn to knit brioche because this looks beautiful. And I thought it was an interesting technique that I'd never really knitted before. Um, so I bought this book and I didn't really do anything with it. <laughs> so I still, I've only just learned to knit brioche in the last year, last, um, spring i guess in the first lockdown i and uh, started a brioche scarf which taught me quite a few it was a free knit along um which taught me quite a few techniques and then i haven't actually finished it either which i must get it out and finish the beginning of the pandemic a year ago and the first lockdown here in the uk i did feel a little bit um like my creativity got sort of um halted a bit I was just I just didn't really know what to knit um it was strange to suddenly have all my workshops cancelled all my events cancelled and I didn't really know what to do so I knitted a load of socks and then I took part in this knit along it was around April last year I think and then I kind of adjusted to the fact that we were in a pandemic and a lockdown uh, i think the shock of being in a full lockdown was just a bit much um and i got back into my regular knitting and which is why i haven't finished the scarf i started um but i must get out and finish it because it is really nice so this is a quite a comprehensive brioche workshop it is called the essential guide to brioche knitting to the brioche stitch sorry so knitting brioche the essential guide to the brioche stitch by nancy marchant it's got patterns it's got techniques it's got a stitch library so if you want a really comprehensive brioche book then i recommend this um i assume it's still in print but i don't know north light books um yeah really like that book and i must really look at it more and dive into brioche knitting a bit more a lot of my books are based on techniques and stitch patterns and design um I try to avoid buying just pattern collections uh, unless they can teach me something because I rarely would sit down and knit a pattern from another designer. Not that I don't want to, but it's just I spend all my knitting time knitting my own designs, really, apart from when I knit socks. So this is a book by Matthew Nay. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his surname right, so apologies for that. It's called Knitting Off the Axis and it's kind of knitting in um sideways in different directions um it's i've never knitted anything from here it's a pattern collection really i mainly bought it because i thought the techniques would be useful um 
because it's kind of knitting in different directions and i must admit i haven't actually looked at it for a long time so i need to sit down and take a bit more of a look at it uh, and see if there's anything i can learn from this i was tempted to sell it in my recent d stash but i won't have another look at it and see if there's anything else i can learn from this uh book um before i get rid of it but i don't know whether this is still available i think i got it when it first came out which was it's published by interweave and it came out in uh 2011 so i probably got it in fairly soon after it came out 2011 2012 so it's quite an old book now it may still be available it may not this is the knitwear design workshop by shirley payton again it's quite a thick book um it's a very comprehensive guide to designing hand knits it's spiral band which i like as the needle lie flat it's a very comprehensive guide to designing um knitting patterns um i got this i can't remember a few years ago but by the time i got this when this book came out i had actually already been designing for a few years so this was the kind of book i would have loved to have had when i started designing i have still learned a lot from this book and um, but i probably would have learned more if i would got this book when i first started designing but obviously this book didn't exist back then so um but it's a really comprehensive book about shaping and creating different types of designs different shapes goes into a lot of the maths um shirley also did have a uh, online course on craftsy i don't know whether that's still available or not but i think it was had the same name as the book and one of the most useful things i have learned from shirley payton from this book and from her craftsy course which i also took um is how to work out how to um increase evenly across a row or around so when a pattern says increase even increase 25 stitches evenly across the next round how do you work out the maths for that and that's one of the things i learned from this book um so if you're interested in nipa design this is a really nice book to have elizabeth zimmerman um is a knitter and designer um she's no longer alive uh, she's a very inspirational knitter and designer she was quite innovative in her day uh, when she was designing she i remember reading in one of her books that she designed a sweater for a magazine in the us she's british but she moved to germany and then moved to the states um and some of her books kind of share some of her personal story and life story which is quite interesting to read but when she moved to the states she uh designed a sweater knitted in the round for a magazine and when they published it they had changed the pattern to be worked flat and it was a pattern that was worked in the round with a circular stranded color work yoke so to work it flat just didn't the way they written the pattern you wouldn't end up with exactly the same result as um as the photograph it would look completely different um so i think that's when she got a bit disillusioned with mainstream publishing and started writing her own newsletters uh, that she used to post out she has some quite innovative techniques and it's quite interesting if you're interested into delving into different techniques and um especially if you're interested in design and that kind of thing um i've got two of her books uh, knit one knit all and i got another one as well and um i don't i don't think i've ever knitted any of her patterns in full but i have looked at a lot of them for various techniques over the years and they are very inspirational so i hope you enjoyed that look through my bookshelves um like i said beginning i've had a big clear out lately i did have a lot more books i got rid of a lot of crochet books because i don't really do much crochet anymore i did do a few crochet designs for a while i've had patterns published in inside crochet and uh, simply crochet and in interweave crochet uh, quite a few years ago now so i was quite into crochet design for a while but i decided to focus on knitting so a lot of my crochet books went i only kept a few um just in case i decide i want to do more in the future I have a lot of books on design as you can see and a lot of books on lace knitting and some Norwegian books most of the books that I've kept are books that I 
uh, find useful in my work or that I find inspiring or that have interesting techniques. So I hope you enjoyed that look at my bookshelf. Um, tell me if you've got any of those books. And I do apologise that I can't list all the books and link to them below. Some of the books may not even be available because it's a long time since I got them. I don't buy books that often anymore um, because there's so much information available online and I don't tend to buy pattern collections. I tend to mainly buy technique books. And of course, I've got my own books over there as well, which I didn't show you because they're in a different part of the shelf. Um, but I do have my own books there as well. So I'll link to all my social media and my website and all the other information below. I hope you enjoyed this special episode. And uh, if there's anything you'd like me to talk about or cover or you'd like to see in my studio, um, maybe a closer look at my yarn stash, do tell me below. And um, I look forward to showing you what's on my needles next time. Thank you very much for watching.